Hey Credit Warriors, welcome to the show. And a few weeks ago, I did a video on T-bills or US Treasury bills and how you can earn over 5% interest on the six-month treasury. But there is actually another type of US government security where you can earn almost 7% and that is the I-bond or inflation adjusted bond. These bonds exist for the sole purpose of giving you a better interest rate than the rate of inflation, which is currently sky high for everything from eggs to even wrapper 50 cent having gone up in price, even if stores are trying to hide it with so-called shrinkflation. So you might think, okay, I'm just gonna buy I bonds and earn 7%, but it's not that simple. And there may be some situations where treasury bills actually work out better. So in this video, I'm gonna go through all the details of both and show you the pros and cons of each and we can figure out which one is right for you. But first, the sponsor of today's video, the Zero Commission brokerage app Webull, have a great deal for our subscribers. You can get up to 12 free stocks when you deposit any amount of money in a new brokerage account with them. You get two free stocks for opening an account and then four, eight, or 10 more when you deposit any amount. The minimum value you can get for this is $34 if you get the lowest number of stocks at poor values. But if you get the highest number of stocks at really good values, it could be valued up to $30,000. Luck of the draw what you get, link below if you're interested. So I buy my US government securities on Treasury Direct, and that's where I recommend buying them because you're getting them straight from the US government, but you can buy them through other brokerages as well. So let's take a look at the pros and cons of each type of security from what the Treasury says about them. And we are gonna start with I-bonds. The current interest rate on I-bonds is 6.89% and that will be in effect until the end of April and then on May 1st there will be a new interest rate most probably lower in fact almost definitely pretty much definitely lower for people who buy on May 1st moving for the next six months. However, the rate does last six months. So if you buy now you'll get 6.89% for six months and then in six months the rate will change to whatever the rate is when they announce the new rate on May 1st. And that would then last another six months. The interest rate gets added to the bond's value, so you don't get the interest until the bond matures, or if you sell it before then, whichever is sooner. And these are 30-year bonds, by the way. Now, you are allowed to cash them out after 12 months, but if you cash them before five years, you lose the most recent three months worth of interest. Now that might not matter if you earn say 7% for your first six months, perhaps 4% for your next six months, and then in a year's time, the interest rate on the bond is down to like 1.5% because inflation is way down and you wait three months and earn hardly anything and then cash it out. But the point is, these are not totally liquid. Your money is locked for 12 months and then after that, there's a penalty if you cash it out before five years. So these are kind of like longer term securities. I mean, the full name is I-Series Savings Bonds, okay? Because they're supposed to be used to protect your life savings from inflation. Well, the first thing you know, you'll have enough for a savings bond, just like dad buys for the payroll savings at work. And from then on, the sky is the limit. Take it from Superman. Now let's talk about taxes and also the cap on how many I-bonds you can buy per year. Now you pay federal income taxes on the interest, but not state and local taxes. And just to clarify, it's federal income tax. It's not long-term capital gains rates. Even if you hold the bonds for years, it's still taxed at your marginal tax rate for whatever tax bracket you're in for your regular salary. But if you use the proceeds from the sale of the bond to cover higher education expenses, you may not have to pay tax at all on the interest earned. You can also only buy $10,000 worth of I-bonds per year, but this is linked to your social security number. So you could buy 10,000, maybe your spouse could buy 10,000 with your shared money with their social security number. Then if you own a company with an EIN, employer identification number, you could buy another 10,000 worth in the name of your company. If you earn two companies uh, with different EINs, you could buy 20,000 worth split across two companies, etc. All right, let's now move on to T-bills and we'll then compare the two. Treasury bills. Now these are the shortest term securities that the US government sells. They come in lengths of 4, 8, 13, 17, 26, and 52 weeks. So at the time when I wrote this script, the four week was at 4.7%, the one year was at 4.8%, and the highest paying treasury bill was the six month at 5.13%. But with the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank last week and a load of other financial stocks opening lower, 
today, it's kind of sent chaos through the bond market as well. And so the yields of all of the US treasuries have come down a little bit, not a huge amount, but a little bit. So the sixth month, for example, is currently sitting at about 4.77%. So just under 5%. You can see all of the others uh, on screen there. So it is rapidly changing because of the chaos that has happened over the last few days. If it continues and we get into a sort of meltdown, then maybe the information even on screen just now will be totally wrong. Who knows? But I'm guessing when you're watching this, the sixth month is probably still going to be around 5% or so, okay? <laughs> Anyway, so the only thing currently paying a higher rate than the six-month treasury is I-bonds, although that will probably change at the end of April. And we'll go into a prediction of what that will change to and compare the two interest rates at the end of this video. Now, T-bills are sold in denominations of $100. You buy them at a discount and then you get the full face value of the bill returned to you when it matures. So for example, if your interest rate was 5%, you're buying the six month T-bill. So that's gonna be half of 5%, 2.5%. You would buy the $100 bill at $97.50 and that $2.50 difference is your profit. And when the bill matures, you're gonna get $100 returned to you. Now you don't know the exact interest rate that you're gonna get until the auction happens, but you can have a reasonably accurate prediction of it by looking at past auctions on Treasury Direct or at charts on sites such as CNBC. Now the maximum amount of T-bills you can buy in one go is $10 million worth, and there isn't any cap per year, okay? So that's the maximum amount you can buy in one transaction, so at one auction. And you can buy $10 million worth of each type, so the four week, the uh, eight week, 13 week, 26 week, etc. So for most people, unless you're like a multi-millionaire or a billionaire, it's as good as there is no limit. Like with I-bonds, you do pay federal income taxes on the profit, but not state and local taxes. And you can also have the money roll over and buy the bills again at the next auction once the bills mature. And for each type of bill, you're allowed to roll over different numbers of times. I think it sits up to two years. So you can see the chart on screen now, and it shows you the different amount of times you can roll over uh, for each length of T-bill. And when you hit those limits, um, you'll obviously just get your money paid back to you in your account, and then you could go in again manually and uh, buy the bills again and set them up to roll over again if you want. You can sell T-bills before they mature, but only if you transfer them out from Treasury Direct to a broker and then instruct that broker to sell them. Personally, I think because these are such short-term securities, you might as well just buy the correct lengths of time for when you need the money back rather than dealing with trying to sell them. Like I-bonds, T-bills are subject to federal income tax not long-term capital gains. So if you are in the 22% tax bracket, like a lot of middle-class people are, that 5% would actually become basically 4%. However, alternatives such as CDs and high interest savings accounts would also be taxed at federal income tax rates. And depending on the state you live in, you may have to pay state and local taxes on top of that. And right now, even the best CDs are only offering up to 4.5%, and that is for a one-year term. So treasury bills, definitely beat CDs and I-bonds might, although it depends what the interest rate goes down to in May. So that brings us to our conclusion and the difference between I-bonds and T-bills. So predictions show us with reasonable accuracy that the interest rate offered on I-bonds on May 1st will be around 4%, possibly a little bit higher, but it's going to be between 4 and 5 on the low end, around 4%. So if you got 6.89% for the first six months, and then for the second six months, you got 4%, that would be an average of 5.44% over the year. Now that is still a little bit higher than the six month T-bill, but with the six month T-bill, you can get out after six months or roll it over to a year and then get out. Whereas with an I-bond, you can't get out until 12 months. And if you do exit at that point, you will lose the most recent three months interest. Now for the recent developments that have kind of complicated things. With the fall of Silicon Valley Bank and a load of other financial stocks opening down this morning, uh, the interest rates on all of the US short-term treasuries, all treasuries basically have plummeted. Well, I wouldn't say plummeted, but they've dropped. This is on fears that now Jerome Powell will have to slow down interest rate hikes. Now, just last week, Jerome Powell said in his address to Congress in his hearing um, that the Fed was most probably going to be doing some more 50 basis point hikes, which obviously would help the rate on treasury bills. Um, but with the recent crisis with all these banks going down, 
um, the Fed might actually have to slow down. Now, it really depends how far this goes as to how much effect it's going to have on the rates of T-bills. If it spreads throughout the economy and becomes a major crisis like 2008, then you might see the Fed halting increases of interest rates altogether, or maybe even starting to lower rates, which obviously would bring the rate of T-bills down. But as it stands now, the rate on the six-month Treasury bill is still close to 5%. And if this whole financial thing doesn't unravel into a 2008-style crisis, we can expect to see it, you know, moderately rising as the Fed raises rates. Whereas with I-bonds, if the Fed's plan works and their rate increases actually start to bring down inflation, um, or if we just have a recession and inflation comes down naturally because of demand destruction, um, you can expect to see the rate of I-bonds going down. So in my opinion, and this is not financial advice, I'm just some guy on the internet, but for me personally, I think treasury bills make more sense right now than I-bonds in 2023. But it depends on your holding time frame and your intention. If you just want to hold your life savings somewhere that's safe from inflation, uh, I-bonds might make sense for you, especially if you're going to hold a long time. So, you know, more than five years, you won't risk losing three months worth of interest. But if you're saving up for something like you want to buy real estate in a year or two years time, like you're saving up for a down payment on a house or something. Personally, I think that T-bills make way more sense for a guaranteed, almost risk-free return. And the interest rates on them should get even better as the Fed raises rates. Fingers crossed we don't have a financial crisis like 2008 right on the horizon. Don't forget, guys, you can get up to 12 free stocks from the Zero Commission investing app Webull. Link for that deal is below. Also, please subscribe to the channel for more credit card and finance tips and tricks almost every day. We'll see you in the next one.